Hey guys, Jason from Wedding Film School here. Today we're gonna to be building the ultimate mobile live streaming rig for wedding filmmakers featuring the ATIM Mini Extreme ISO. Hey guys, what's up? Live streaming is huge this year. We're still all needing to do it as wedding filmmakers. Today we're gonna to be doing a build out of our brand new for 2021 live streaming rig. And I'm really excited because it's mobile, it's easy to use, and it's featuring the ATM Mini Extreme ISO, which means it's powerful and it can do everything we need. So let's check out the gear. So the ATM Mini Extreme is the heart of this rack. That's for good reason. The ATM Mini Extreme ISO has everything a wedding filmmaker could need. It's got the ability to record eight individual video tracks as H.264 files, as well as two of the audio inputs as separate audio inputs. It has two USB-C ports, which is great because you can plug in your mobile hotspot, plug into your computer, you could set it up as a webcam. You could do all kinds of awesome stuff and having more USB-C is better. It also has two HDMI outputs, which you can use in a range of ways. Maybe you take one of the HDMI outs and you put it into something like a Teradek encoder so you can use their awesome network or cellular bonding features, or maybe even plug it into your YOLO box. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do. The more HDMI outs you have, the better. So we love the ATM Extreme ISO. For our display, we went with the MSI Optics Mag 161V. It's a 15.6 inch display, so it's plenty big for the multi-view and it's very affordable. This year, we're gonna be using the Teradek Vid UX. We wanna take advantage of their network bonding features, so we have the ability to combine our wireless hotspot with a Wi-Fi signal and ethernet for the best possible connection, not using cellular bonding. We decided to upgrade our rig and get the Mix Pre 3 by Sound devices. This thing's great for a wedding filmmaker because oftentimes we need to capture audio for our highlight films and things like that in addition to have a separate mix for our live stream. And that's exactly what this will let you do. You have one level for your recording, which is unaffected by these little faders. So you can mix your live stream with no issue. I love this thing. For headphones, we went with the trusty Audio-Technica M40Xs. These things are Great headphones, very useful. I mean, but use any headphones, whatever. So we have a Verizon 5G hotspot. It's the Enseco and it's really great. It works awesome, um, but there's a range of Wi-Fi hotspots out there. So get something that has good reception where you are. Our good friends at Jackery sent us over something that I'm really excited about this year, which we're powering this whole rig on now. The Explorer 290 by Jackery. This thing is incredible. It's gonna power our whole rig for as long as we need it when we're doing wedding filmmaking. It really expands our capabilities. And as you know, you can't always control where you're setting up. Sometimes you're in the middle of a field. So having portable power, I think is a must. This rack here is an SKB Studio Flyer. It has four rack spaces. This thing is great has a nice little laptop compartment on the top. It's easy to tear down. It is perfect for live streaming. In addition to all the gear, we also have a bunch of hardware that goes into the live streaming box. We have a standard rack shelf that we use. Um, you can get a range of these online. I would just find one that's at a good price and make sure it's durable and sturdy. In the back, we have a custom rack panel. It has four HDMI inputs four XLR inputs, one XLR output, an ethernet input, and power. And it's really great. To power this thing, we have an American DJ Power Rack USB. I wanted to make sure I got something with two USB outputs because as we know, that's just becoming more and more common. So having them built into the rack was kind of a must for me. In addition to all the gear, we got a range of cables and things like that. If you want to know everything that goes into this rig, I would check out our old video on the Wedding Pros channel. Also, go down in the descriptions. All the items are there. If you want to buy any of them, we promise you it supports the channel helps us a lot and you're gonna have an awesome rig so it's gonna be dope so this is what it looks like completed I'd love to show you guys how we put this thing together so let's get into the build so when you're building one of these things out you really want to be thinking about a couple just things just off the bat which is a keeping your stuff safe B is it accessible if something breaks C how easy is it to use when you are actually on site on a job. Maybe they're all equally important. I just said them in a random order, I don't know. But anyway, let's get into it. So this is a really cool rack unit. Again, we're gonna have this down in the description if you wanna check it out. It's great as it has this laptop area up here and you can get all these little Velcro thingies and 
and just keep your laptop safe. You can actually transport your laptop in there and close it and the top is padded so it's perfectly safe and it's got all these little holes to run your cables up through. So it's really cool in that way. We actually installed a really cool rack shelf and like look at the mess that's in here. I took this all apart. Come and look at this thing, Caleb. Oh no. Oh, this thing is a mess. So we got to make it nice and clean um, and organized. So anyway, we're going to clean this thing out. Ugh. Caleb, I don't know about you. Have you been into Yacht Rock lately? What the heck is that? So I got this thing kind of emptied out. So why don't we kind of check this out? I'll get my cell phone camera for you, Caleb. Here's what we got on the inside. I got all these XLRs that I'm gonna be plugging into um, my MixPre 3. And that's gonna be hopefully pretty clean. This thing goes in and out, as you can see. It looks like I need to actually tighten it a little bit. Looks like it's gotten a little bit loose. That's one thing when you're building, when you're doing stuff with racks, it will loosen up. So you do need to maintain it from time to time. So this needs a little bit of TLC. And then these are my HDMIs that are running from there. So yeah, I mean, these are soldered in and these are just like basic old short HDMI cables that plug into the adapters in the back. I also actually have ethernet that is routed so you can plug ethernet right into the back of this thing as well. So when you're doing this, um, the other thing you wanna be looking at is really, especially if you're taking an older rig and repurposing it, um, is really testing everything as you're going. And so we're gonna be going through each of our XLR inputs on the back with just a little old SM58 microphone and testing them out to make sure they work. And we actually labeled these, so that's good. Um, label your rigs, label them. <laughs> okay, we got input one working, audio input three seems to be working. I think I'm gonna keep this thing up here like this. This is like chaos, guys. So I'm gonna just plug this Jackery in and we're gonna see if it works. I've, I've actually never plugged this in. All right. Okay, so uh, the Jackery works. What's cool about this thing that you're gonna notice is you can see the power draw. Right now it's drawing 10 watts just to run that little thing. So you're gonna see the power draw as we plug things in, maybe going up. So I'm gonna put the ATIM mini in here. This has a little bit of a lip, so I kind of just put it right up against it. And this might seem a little bit of unorthodox because it's a nice piece of equipment, but honestly, I just gaff it. <laughs> it's so much easier. <laughs> I'm just gonna run it down. Success, let's see how much we're drawing now. 19 watts of power. I feel like a mad scientist. Whoa! I'm gonna put the monitor in so I can start testing the HDMI inputs. So this thing is like a really, Literally just like an MSI cheapo whatever monitor. Uh, I think it was like 150 bucks. I think it works really great. It's nothing crazy special, it just works. So we got this thing working over here. Let's get some audio into this thing. I'm gonna take the stereo output from the MixPre 3 and I'm gonna be plugging it into my ATEM. By nature, when you have this ATEM, it doesn't actually have audio you have to go into the ATEM software and enable all the audio on each input. So I like to have it on everything, but this is just showing you mic one is getting this signal. And what's cool is I can go here. Let's make it peak out really bad. Let's, let's just get a straight up, just red square wave. We don't want that actually though. We, we don't want that. So we're going to get it down because the person might go, I now pronounce you bad wife. Make us the bride. Loud noises. One, two, one, two. Hmm. Not sounding correct. This is a good time to check out our computer because we might be able to see what's wrong on the software. Hello, yes, that is, sounds wonderful. And that's the thing, this thing does not let you control the gain levels on your inputs, which is why I really like to have the computer because um, the problem that I was having just now was not that my fader was too high, but my gain level is too high. This is one of the things that people really struggle with when they're getting into live streaming is you moving into the elements of audio and not just video and you need to understand game staging which means you have preamp gain and you have fader gain so we're going to add our vidu x to this and we're actually going to be running on our hdmi 2 out into this and we're going to run our program out into it i want it up here because i want to be able to change the menu i'm a little concerned that i might need to be able to change it with wireless stuff oftentimes you need good line of sight and height 
in order to do, you know, have a better signal. So the more you jam something into a metal box, the less likely it is to have a good signal. So I figured I'm gonna get a little higher. What's really cool is you can actually do this with the ATIM as well. So we're gonna be running a test to see which one works better. You can actually plug your cell phone or your mobile hotspot directly into the ATIM using the USB and actually do a live stream without any kind of Wi-Fi or any ethernet connection. But I like the idea of using this because then I can combine 4G plus Wi-Fi plus ethernet if I have it to get even a more reliable signal. So we're gonna load up the handy dandy Vidu app. See these little icons? You got Wi-Fi and you got your hotspot. So you have both of those connections. And so what it will do is this will actually allow you to use both. And then of course you can use ethernet as well. So we got this thing plugged in. We're running battery power on the laptop. We're, we're having 54 watts of power. I'm only down 8% so we started this video. So this thing is more than powerful enough to run my live stream for really, I, mean, I could even run a Catholic ceremony on this thing. Thank you so much at Jackery because we think this thing is gonna make a big difference and we think you should grab one of these two for your live streaming rig. Let's pack it up and see how it packs up. Packs up nice. I think I'm pretty happy with the rig and I think it's gonna work really well. Hey guys, so hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hey guys, hey guys, hey guys, hey guys, hey guys. Hey guys. Hey guys. <laughs> Hopefully you guys enjoyed that build. We'd love to do more of those on the channel. If you liked it, hit us up in the comments. Let us know what you thought. Like the video, subscribe, hit the bell, you know, the YouTube stuff, do all of that. Definitely remember, we got all this stuff down in the description. If you wanna know what went into our build, definitely check that out. We cannot wait to do more of this stuff for you guys here on the Wedding Film School channel.